How's it going guys? It's going off grid and today I'm going to be showing you this 140 amp hour battery I built. Uh, the cells are from batteryhookup.com. The case is off AliExpress. I have links to everything in the description except for the cells which are no longer available. By the time they get shipped to my house and I'm able to make a video on them they're sold out unless they have a really big bulk order so you just got to keep an eye out for stuff like this they have stuff like these cells or similar cells to this going on all the time so and this is 140 amp hours in a case that's only nine inches by eight inches by seven inches tall that's a really small form factor and these cells inside I'll show you later each each little uh, pack has its own BMS, so I didn't even have to buy a BMS for this. If I wanted to put a BMS in here, I could. There's still enough room. We'll be doing a capacity test with this uh, charger, 1,000 watt charger. It also does capacity tests and all that stuff. Take forever though, because I believe it only does a five amp load. Uh, this can push about 75 amps continuous. Um, you can do a little bit more for burst, but not much. And we're just charging it right now. Charging it up to 16.8 volts because that's its max charge because this is a lithium polymer uh, type battery on the inside. So most of the time this is going to be only charged to about 15 volts. And I'm going to do a capacity test at around 15 volts as well to see how much usable power there is. Or actually more like 15 and a half volts. Whatever an alternator will charge your car to. And uh, we'll do a capacity test at that voltage as well to see what we're losing from 16.8 volts down to about 15 and a half volts of where it's actually going to get used. And hope you guys enjoy the video. So here's the test setup. The power bright inverter. We have our multimeter. I only ended up charging it to 12.2 volt or 16.2 volts. And we have our meter that's going to be counting how many watt hours we get out of this and I went with this route instead of the that charger there because this is much quicker I can do about the 30 amp load with this light and this uh, inverter so let's get to it first off we're gonna turn it on Ooh, that was loud okay we're running we're pulling point it looks like it goes up and down, up and down. Anyways, pulling a bit of power there. Okay, now that we have the light plugged in, it seems like it's awfully bright. I should check the voltage of the inverter output. Because we are at its higher end. Eh, no, nah, that's probably right. Okay, we got 470 watts coming out of this thing. This might not be very efficient right now because of the high voltage I'm putting in I'm not sure but I know that this normally takes on a, a kilowatt meter uh, 255 watts plus in efficiency so this kind of seems a little high 470 yeah but that could be because the input voltage that this is giving the light might be higher which would also make actually here what we got a kilowatt meter right here let's plug that in so we get uh, an accurate rating. Let's kill that meter. The prong likes to move. So I gotta, let's see if that'll work. Yep, we got power. So let's plug it in. Oops, there we go. Oh, look at that, it is higher. It's saying 424 watts. Oh, maybe that's a different light. Oh, that's probably a different light. I have two of these. This is the 500 watt. I have a 500 watt and a 250. That makes more sense. Okay, so that's what we're pulling from the batteries. That's how many watt hours we've already used. I'm just going to let that uh, do its thing. So 500 watts, that's a pretty big load for this little battery. Should be able to run it for a few hours. And uh, see what we get. Droop down to 15.3 volts and still dropping we'll see what this kind of plateaus at um, what kind of amps are we pulling from the battery terminals I wonder it 
31 amps, does that line up? Yep, look at that. Lines up pretty well, so that meter is fairly accurate. Okay, so we got our volts there. This meter is looking pretty accurate. And I'll get back to you guys with uh, with how much this thing uh, can put out, how many watt hours or kilowatt hours. And uh, then I'll show you the inside and how I did this. Okay, so we're back. We're sitting at 13.7 volts. We're pushing one oh, between 485 watts and 500 watts. I stopped using the light because it's very cloudy outside. I'm not making much power. So I decided I'm going to use this to run stuff in my house because why waste it on just a light in my garage? So now we're pulling 530 watts. So this is running two computers, um, a projector, uh, a bunch of plugs and stuff plugged into the plugs in my living room. Uh, I t feel a tiny bit of heat coming off this thing, but not too bad. It can go up to 1800 watts. So far, we've used nine... 165 watt hours and this voltage is under load remember actually you guys haven't seen inside of this yet anyways you'll see why there is some sag there's thin thin uh, wires uh, going to each um, cell group it's about this size oh, there you go there's that heat I talked about fans just kicked in very quiet though it's not bad uh, anyways, each cell group has a small wire like this, and there is uh, 14 positives like this and 14 negatives that all come together. And then I have them uh, seven to, uh, wires going to a ring terminal, and then I would have all the other seven going into a ring terminal and mounted to the bottom. But anyways, that's why there is some voltage sag in the lines, because there's about 10 inches of wire inside of this box. So it wouldn't surprise me if the batteries are actually over 14 volts still and the sagging in the lines because of the 36 amp load. Anyways, we'll find out. Once we fully discharge this thing, I'm going to charge it and see how many amps or how many amp hours we put back into it as well. Okay, so I stopped the test because we we're sitting at 13.3 volts. But the second I took the load off, we're at 14.3 volts. So, between sagging the cells and sagging the lines on the inside of this thing, um, we lost a whole volt. So, I, I, the batteries were not near as dead as I thought. I should have kept going. We only hit 1.17 kilowatt hours. Again, there's a battery voltage. I'm going to charge this thing back up. I'm going to charge it completely full this time. Uh, I'm going to see how much power goes into this battery uh, with that uh, charger, and we'll go from there. There, it's going up even more now. Okay, so we're sitting at just shy of 900 watt hours. We're sitting at 14.11 volts under load, pulling 500 watts. A little under 500 watts now that the fan shut off. Battery is doing just fine. Temperature wise, I can't really feel any difference. Terminals are really good. Everything seems really well. Let's see how close to 140 amp hours we get. Should be able to pull something like another, ooh, 900, another six, 700 watt hours out of this. Anyways, I'll let you know when we get there. All right, guys, it's going off grid again. We're back with update on how much power we've used. We're at about 1,200 watt hours. And I found that, because I'll, after you see the construction of this battery later, you'll see why. There is about uh, 14 uh, wires for the minus and 14 wires for the positive. And each wire is about 4 inches long, and they're about this thick. They're very small wires coming from the batteries because they have their own BMS that's rated for 5 amps. So this is limited to about 75 amps of output power. 
and with those wires I get a voltage sag of about a volt one volt so with a voltage sag of a volt we should be sitting at 14.6 volts not 13.6 volts so I do believe this test will keep going for quite a while I've actually already tripped all 14 BMS boards in here and it completely tripped the battery the battery shut down and that was because I tried starting the inverter with this already plugged in there goes the inverters fans I just flipped it on I guess there was a big surge and it flipped it tripped all the BMS boards which is kind of funny actually and here we are we're pulling 37 amps so it'll be uh, I'm very curious to see how many uh, watt hours this thing has if this thing was a true uh, 140 amp hours, we should get close to 2,000 watt hours of this tiny little battery. Like this thing is not very big, only weighs about 35 pounds. So we'll see. All right, so at right around this point, I just restarted the test or restarted the inverter. It shut down at 1,445 watt hours. You can see the battery voltage is dropping quite quickly so it looks like this is the end I, I do like the BMF's uh, cutoff voltage it's pretty cool uh, we should be able to see the BMS's cut out each very quickly now as batteries start dropping like whole total packs we should really see a drop in the in the, the voltage here So my guess is these are close to 10 amp hour battery packs each. There's 14 of them in here. But, I don't know. They're either slightly de degraded or... I also did not charge them all the way up. I only charged them to 16.5 uh, volts, not 16.8 volts. So that could be slightly wide too. But it looks like we're only getting around 1500 watt hours out of this battery and I'm sure if I did this at a, a lower discharge rate it would do much better uh, and maybe that is also why but anyways the battery is definitely fairly dead cells on the inside are these feel slightly warm but I restarted this test is actually lasting a really long time I'm surprised let's see what uh, voltage it shuts off at It actually could be the wires on the inside that are actually getting warm and not the batteries. 5 amps through those little wires would definitely be pushing it. <coughs> it looks like it's going all the way down to 3 volts a cell. These BMSs, the way they work, when they cut out, they do not turn back on until they see some charge voltage. Once they see a little bit of charge voltage, then they come back on. You're able to discharge again for a little bit. So we should be at about 3 volts a cell, but we've got about a volt, a whole volt uh, 
drop internally. So we're probably close to 13 volts, not 12. Still dropping. Oh boy, it just it dropped very quickly. Did you guys see that? Those are those are packs dropping out. Packs dropping out. That's it. When too many packs drop out, that puts a huge load on individual batteries because they're all individual BMS boards. When I take this apart, I'm gonna be checking them to make sure no boards were damaged. Anyways, bounce back to 13 and a half volts. Now I'm going to hit the charger. Charger is now charging. As you can see, we're charging at 13 amps. We're going to charge up to 16.78 volts and see how this recovers. Then I'm going to take this apart and show you guys what's inside. Okay, so here we got the inside of the battery. Each uh, pack of four cells has its own BMS. And every uh, pack has these two little wires coming off of it. That's why this whole battery is limited to about 75 amps max. And that will be pushing these wires to about 5 amps per wire, which will be probably the most that they should see. The BMS is also limited to 5 amps per pack. And I tested it, and they do cut out, which is good. I'm just putting this uh, Bristol board or crystal board it's like a plastic cardboard just as a spacer you can see the case is bulged with the spacer in but once i put the top on it'll really compress these cells and really keep them tight together there's a little bit of a gap there because it has some foam in between there like a black foam anyways i just extended the one lead because it wasn't long enough and this was a super super simple build because these already had the bms built in all I did was buy a $25 case and stick them in. These were $10 per uh, four cells from batteryhookup.com with a BMS. And these have a, a fairly low uh, cycle rating. Uh, wow. They don't even know. They don't, they don't have the exact specs, but they guess these to be 300 cycles uh, to 80%. And that is because they are extremely power dense. Like this is the this is fifteen hundred watt hours of usable power, and it's about two thousand watt hours of rating. Uh, so these were ten amp hours each. I from my test, I'm getting eight out eight amp hours each. So fifteen hundred watt hours in this tiny little package. It's not very big. Only weighs about 35 uh, pounds, not even, maybe 30 pounds. I haven't actually weighed it yet. That's just my guessing. Um, and this is uh, over 50% of what that huge battery, the last battery I made from Battery Hookup with those 20 amp hour LG cells was, oh boy, like four or five times the size at least four times the size, maybe five times. And this is over half of its rating. It is so power dense, it's crazy. And when you go extreme power density, you lose on cycle life is what I find. Um, at least in this case, because it's insane how much power there is in here. The fact that this is at 14.8 volts, over 100 amp hours in this tiny little case, it's just mind-blowing. But, uh, yeah. So there's 14 packs of four in here. Uh, this is a 4S times $10 American. That is $140 plus a $25 case. Plus, so if you live in the States, this is super cheap. I live in Canada, so I had to pay for shipping and I had to pay for duties, which was adds a lot of cost to me. So anybody that, especially that lives in United States, these if you see a battery like this come up with a BMS, everything pre-hooked up, this is so easy to make a battery. Anyways, I'm just uh, finalizing this and putting it back together.